you might not like the look and feel of the icons found in Bobo's native icon library. Most often, you might want to upload your own icons into Bobo. And the mistake most developers do is they upload the icons directly into the image element. This approach is not the best. And here's why. Imagine you have to use the same icon in 10 or 15 different instances. Now you're uploading it manually each time from your computer. That means your database now has 15 identical icons. And say down the road you decide to change that icon and use another one. You'd have to go in all 15 instances in your app and manually change your icon. Hello guys. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name is Cliff. And in today's bubble tip, I'm going to be showing you how to upload custom icons into your bubble application and use them dynamically across all elements in your app. Let's dive in. You can start by putting together a list of icons that you want to use in your app. This might be from the assets you have in your Figma file. Um, for those looking for a very good um, site to download icons, I found um, SVG repo has really good icons. I will leave a link in the description um, below. I recommend you always use SVG icons on your web app. The second step now would be to create the icon option set. So in your app, go to data, option sets, and you create an option set. I'm calling mine icon. In your option set, add two attributes. You can add more if you want. Call them whatever you want. I'm calling it icon one and icon two. Add a list of options in your option set. Each option stands for an icon. Now I recommend you name the options by the icon's name or the intended use. So when I look at search here, I know this is a search icon that I'm going to use each time I want to show the user as a search icon. The reason why I have two attributes here is so that if I have an option set that I need to hold two of them at the same time, for instance, the left and right arrow, I can easily do that here. If you look at my naming convention, you see that after the icon name, I give a description of what is inside the two attributes. So I know in icon one, I have the left arrow and in icon two, I have the right arrow. You can copy this naming convention in your option sets as well. But the main point here is to create the option sets and upload the icons. You can still have just one attribute here. You write search, you upload the search icon just there. You write arrow left, you upload just the left arrow. You write arrow right, you upload just the right arrow. But I found that this way is more efficient. Whenever you want to use an icon, simply place an image element on the page or in your reusable element. And in the dynamic image field, insert dynamic data. What you need to do is get an option and then get your icon library. Select the option you want to get and then display the attribute. What you get is this. The same logic goes for the icon itself, the logo icon itself, but I'm getting the second icon because I know it's the icon of the logo. And in this group here, it's just a group and you can design that however you want. I have two image elements in it. The left one is supposed to be my left arrow and I'm getting my arrow option set and I'm getting icon one because I know icon one is left and the right is icon two, which is right. The same goes for up and down. This search icon here is actually how most people upload their icons in Bobo. 
directly into the image element itself. You'll come to see the disadvantage shortly. Now I have another image element here and I'm using the option set search icon, which is dynamic. On my page, I have a reusable element that is similar to this element and it has similar images. So as you can see, these icons look identical, but we're going to change the um, icon for the search and we're changing it for the one that we're using it dynamically. And you'll see that it propagates on all the instances in the app. So if I change my search icon, we've uploaded a new icon, let's save that. And if we refresh our page, you see now that the icon actually changes on all the instances. Now let's change this icon. As you can see, it only propagated in that one instance. And I want you to imagine if I had the same 15 other places as I've mentioned earlier, I would have to go and manually do this. And again, the disadvantage is that I'm uploading the same icon in my app 15 different times, of which I could just do it once and then call it in 15 different places. This system has its limitations. One, you can't actually animate the icons unless you're able to animate the image element itself. Um, you can change the color of the icons and um, in general you can't really resize um, tiny icons to be um, a little bigger on the page. So um, I will leave a link to um, a video um, the guys over at Building with um, Bubble have made a great um, video showing you how to actually import custom icons and um, allow you or your users to customize the size and um, color of the icons. That wraps up our tutorial on importing and using custom icons in Bubble. We hope you found this information helpful for your web app development journey. If you have any questions or ideas for future videos, please let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more no-code tips and tricks. Until next time, stay blessed.